So hey folks, today we're going to be talking about Godzilla vs. Kong. So this is a new type of video. This won't be a complete review. This is just going to be a first impressions, initial thoughts kind of video, whatever, whatever it's called. I will be doing a follow-up when the DVD comes out, when we've had some time to see how this movie has been received, and after I can see it a couple of times, you know, let it saute in my mind. I plan on doing this with the bigger releases, because my opinion changes on them over time. I am easily swayed by other people's opinions and views. This will be spoiler-free in the beginning. I'll warn you when the spoilers are here. So, Godzilla vs. Kong. That happened. This is... Hmm. This movie fixes a lot of the problems from the previous, but it makes others worse. The CGI looks fantastic, so much better than the original. Almost every scene in Godzilla vs. Kong is a special effects storm and there's not 50 weather filters. This movie has utterly insane set pieces. There are a lot of fight scenes that are long and easy to see. It's, it's awesome. And it took an army because the credits is just a solid block of special effects artists. However, this does lead into the first glaring problem that it did not address from King of the Monsters. This movie travels at a breakneck speed. My neck hurt during this movie because I had to look up at the screen, but it might have actually been Whiplash. This movie is also bare bones in the story department. Godzilla vs. Kong is an almost two hour movie, but it feels really short. Godzilla vs. Kong starts out strong, but it kind of loses its way near the end. It's a real shame that some serious themes and unique concepts are brought up but never given the time they deserve. It never explains or elaborates on anything, so in that regard, King of the Monsters was much better. I swear to you, I bet this is all explained in the tie-in comics. I hope Legendary is very, very happy with themselves because these comics are now in my shopping cart. This does sound harsh, but I really, really did like this movie. It's very enjoyable, just don't expect it to be much more than being enjoyable. To sum up the non-spoiler section, this is a really fun movie to watch for pure entertainment. It doesn't have much of a story or really any coherent cohesion. But if you go in knowing that, it's impossible not to have a good time. Alrighty, we gonna get spoily. So Mechagodzilla, he's kind of meh. Design-wise, it's a little iffy. These weird crane hands might be realistic and practical. That doesn't stop them from looking kind of wacky. His face also looks menacing, but in some kind of uncanny valley that throws it off. I will give him the compliment that I love the gunmetal hydraulics look. They even made it so that the bars on his chest form to make like a rib cage. It's pretty cool. I also like how he isn't just a mecha version of Godzilla. They tried to do their own thing, which actually makes him very similar to anime mecha Godzilla. They also do put him in a horror tone, which is really cool. It is dabbled in that Ghidorah is being contorted and twisted into mecha Godzilla with this awesome pilot. But Ghidorah just takes control and ends this plotline. Sadly, the breakneck speed never lets it sink in, which is really sad because it's by far the best element of this movie. There are so many narrative implications for the pilot who is Sirizawa's son, but absolutely nothing comes out of it. Unlike your mechanized friend here, everything involving the Hollow Earth in this movie is incredible and well executed. My only gripe is, it would have been cool to stay here longer and see some more stuff or monsters. The Hollow Earth is, however, the final plunge into chaos. We go deep down the rabbit hole. The scientific approach to Kaijuega has been completely abandoned, and this has gone full anime. Godzilla is burning holes through the planet, and the buildings have reached infinite structural integrity. Kong's ocean parkour game is on point and is putting Asuka to shame. You know, for someone who says they aren't a weeb, you sure do talk about anime a lot. Alright, let's talk about the little social commentary that is here. Now the villain is super obvious. Painfully. Sword and shield levels obvious. 
It does make a self-aware joke about it at one point, but that doesn't fix it. His plan is super cliche, and all the villains' apex are just super vain and want to retake the world for humanity. Which, as someone in the real world, I can say isn't worth it. It is obvious that they went for the minimum motivations in order to add as much time for the monsters as possible. We also have this cliche girl who's a jerk to everyone and delivers edgy one-liners, who, by the way, is straight up just killed by Kong. I was not expecting that. That Kong, you're a savage. There is a theme about humanity meddling with nature and the fact that it only leads to our destruction, which is a good theme and suited to both Kong and Godzilla, but it's pretty surface level. They could have gone deeper, but, you know, they won't because you know, plot development and stuff, you know, it's always getting in the way. It's pretty obvious that it's, this wasn't written badly, it was meant to be this way. It's just something to move the action along. And in that way, I can't fault it. I mean, as a movie I can, but like, in execution I can't. I think my conclusion for the non-spoiler part is still relevant for my final thoughts, but I took some time to think about this and see other thoughts and arguments. I think there is a general consensus, and after taking some outside perspectives, my opinion has cleared up a bit and I can make my final statement. This is not meant to be taken seriously. It's self-aware and was never intended to be. The breakneck speed might not be a fault, but a feature. This is pure fun and joy, and if you know that going in, you'll enjoy this. Even if you didn't, you're probably still gonna enjoy this because it's really fun. To be honest, the original was very same in this regard, so in reality, this could be the perfect remake. But there is a dark truth to this. Godzilla was founded on social commentary. Godzilla has been fun, mindless action, but that has never been the focus of this series, and when it was, it didn't go well. The fact that at this point, this is the highest rated MonsterVerse movie is kind of alarming. Marvel continues to seep into every American movie, and Godzilla vs. Kong may be the standard for the MonsterVerse now. Is this the future of American Godzilla? A mindless joyride with no substance? I hope you enjoyed the review. I really wanted to go into more depth, but that would have been pretty self-indulgent, and I could have been here for days. However, as stated above, I will elaborate on stuff in future videos if you want to see that. I'm going to save my rating for the follow-up after we see the long-term effects. I know I had some mixed opinions, but I really think you should see Godzilla vs. Kong. It is super fun to watch. This is just pure fun and joy, and if you know that going in, you're gonna enjoy this movie. Even if you didn't, you're probably still gonna enjoy it, because this movie is ridiculous amounts of fun. I hope you stick around the Beast Corps, as this is just the beginning, and I will see you soon with Singular Point. Oh my god.